Two men journey to the bars and restaurants of Scandinavia to find amazing beers, always with the same question. Hey, what's on tap? It's time to find out. All right, what's on tap podcast? Dot com. We are super excited because this is our annual kickoff to the advent calendar. And this year we have our system belog of beers like we always do. We have four selected beers. Um, of various styles and ilks from different parts of the country. Uh, this year we actually have three Swedish beers and one American beer, which I think last year was not the case. So I'm super excited to dig into these bad boys. And all Swedish beers are from Skilne. They are! Wow, that is a uh, weird Because Skilne will always kick Gothenburg and Stockholm's ass. Yeah, fuck them bitches. Um... That seems overly excessive, Stefan. I don't think so. I think it's that, very uh, right in line. Stefan's with opinions do not represent the opinions of what's on that podcast that come. It that does very, not. Yeah, that's, that's very true. I, I would not uh, expect that any other way. Um, but we are joined today by the triumvirate, Matthias. I am here. Yes, you are. You are land, Martin. I'm fire. Hills. Yeah, you are. And I am Stefan. I am Water. And together we form Captain Planet. He's, He's our hero. hero. Gonna put Captain pollution down, down to zero. zero. What? I, I do not know this. All right, fine. So apparently, uh, Matthias never watched Captain Planet, and well, that means that he's against the environment. Apparently, Matthias lived a very sheltered uh, childhood, and I feel bad for his and his. So Captain Planet was summoned when the five kids in the show, Fire, Water, Wind, Earth, and Heart. Heart was absolutely useless. You could never use it to stop bad guys. All the other elements could be stopped to use used to stop bad guys. Heart had to stop myself there for a little bit. Could communicate <laughs> with the other planeteers. Okay. Let's discuss this after the show. So if you've never seen... Uh, so hello and welcome to what's on captainplanet.com uh, podcast. <laughs> we're talking yes. about sustainability this Christmas oh, and oh, our we being more sustainable. Really now? We are. Mm, yeah. <laughs> okay. I feel like your negativity is really That's, bringing the show down, Matthias. Yeah. Uh, you haven't been on in like eight months, but yet you come back and you're just kind of like, I'm going to fart over your show. We're talking about pollution. and I feel, I do, I'm not a fan of I feel like show. you're <laughs> an, I feel like you're an emotional polluter, man. I think Martin has had a bad influence on you, Stephanie. <laughs> I, I, I do not disagree with that. Yeah. I will say my liver also agrees with you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So today we have four beers we're going to try. Oh. Um, and the first beer we're going to start with is Lusalilla. Did I say that wrong? No, uh, it's fine. Good. You didn't say it wrong, but it's it's important to say that there's both Lusalilla and Lusalilla. What's the difference? Uh, alcohol oh. volume. Yeah. This Lusalilla is the str- is this is the strong one. This is Lusalilla. Lusalilla is the small one. Lilla. Which one did I say? L- 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 you, you you were exactly in between Lula, uh, Lele and Lila. Perfect. That's where I like the rest. Right oh, in between yeah. the two. All right. So this comes in at six point five uh, percent ABV. So not to think that this is a huge alcohol bomb because it's no. not. Um, this is a fruity, unique, and refreshing wild ale fermented with saffron. So I am guaranteed to automatically, ooh, not like this. This looks like. Mm. This looks like. Uh, if you ever had a vitamin B pill, <laughs> and then you went to the toilet, oh, yikes. that was exactly what this looked like. So this is meant to taste like a lucibule, oh, I a saffron bun. But last year, tasted like bulia bays. Yeah, the I did not care for this. Are you making fun of my bulia bays expression? No, I'm just, I, I'm just a really huge fan of the word. Bouillabaisse. 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 Right. Bouillabaisse. Well, so what the hell does bouillabaisse taste like? Like soup stock. It's, it's a, it's it's like a soup fish stock. soup with saffron. Yeah. Oh, right. <laughs> right. I now you know exactly yeah, what yeah. we're talking about. The bouillabaisse. So that's a problem for me. Like saffron for me is a savory item. Mm-hmm. It's like oh, it's a baking item. 
No. It's a baking item. No. You use it for baking lucebula. It's a no, soup. No, you, it's a you use it for soups and stews and... No, you uh, use it for lucebula. And it's, saffron things. It's kind of like um, cardamom. Cardamom for me is amazing in Indian food, but you put it in, savory, in, in sweet items and it is hot trash. It's cardamom <coughs> bums nothing. are garbage. No, they're fucking delicious. Oh. Oh. Cardamom beers. Cardamom, cardamom beers, I can handle more than cardamom bum, uh, bums. Uh, buns. <laughs> Car- cardamom <laughs> bums are entirely different section than I. Love I those ones. Yeah, who doesn't love a good cardamom bum? Um, but cardamom <laughs> buns, I uh, I am not a fan of, and I've never been a fan of. I think saffron for me is the same way. If it's in a savory item, such as fish dishes or soups, love it. When it comes to sweet things, <laughs> Oh, it is just so hard for me to, to, to taste. All right. Cheers, guys. Because this is like golden yellow. Yes. Yeah. This was like the most Swedish beer you'd come up with. And I think that it still tastes like fish stock. It does. It's, it's, it's like from fish soup. Yeah. This is Puglia based. What's so weird is I kind of like the underlying sour beer that they created. Yeah. But then the saffron on top of that just goes. <laughs> the look on here. You know what you look like, Matthias? You look like. Have you ever seen a puppy like try to eat a lemon? Yeah. <laughs> and it, it just looks at a lemon and just like just shakes its head and then it barks at it. And then it shakes his head some more. He wants to eat the lemon, but he knows it's not good. That, that was your look right now. Yeah. <laughs> the thing is, like, I really enjoyed this uh, the first time we came out. <laughs> <laughs> wow, he just pounded that. All right. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> Ooh, damn, that was hard. Yeah, uh, that's what she said. Ooh. <laughs> 3.25 yeah this is not like I can appreciate this I understand where people would like it this just does not work for me on almost every level so I, I gotta give this we haven't done that what no I would, like shooting it was a real bold choice I was quite impressed by your uh, bravosity there it was you really just uh, was bad took life. that to Pound Town in a way that <clears throat> most people would not have. It was bad life decisions right there. Yeah, but I feel like this was the most Swedish beer I could possibly find at the system belong at regular. The thing is, like, if Christmas it was, beer release, if it was a bit, bit less saffron, mm-hmm. it would probably be quite nice. I like the underpinning beer. I think yeah. the underpinning beer is really good. I think the saffron just. Just horrible things of this beer. Yeah. Probably. So before we move to the next beer, what are your ratings? I gave it a 3.25. Oh, 3.25. Yeah, that's rich. Uh, <laughs> 2.5. I actually like Boulier Race. I will also give this a, a 2.5. I I want to like it, but it's just so... It's kind of like the um, pumpkin spice beers. Yeah. Yeah. It's for me is the pumpkin spice beer of Sweden. Yeah. We will never speak of it again. All right, so next up is the Winter Brew, which is a seasonal L from Rimmelau. But um, well, we can never use this glass again, so. That's why I brought out two glasses for everyone. Good choice. I know. Thank you. You're welcome. And this is um, winter seasonal beer with um, hops. Comes in at 5.3% ABV. It is very translucent, or not translucent, but uh, clear. Clear. Uh, extremely clear. I mean, it is beautifully, uh, a beautiful looking beer with a nice frothy head to it. However, the smell is rather. Is it a lager? Mild. It's very. It's an ale. It just says seasonal ale. So. Could be a lager. Could be a... It's a seasonal ale. It will not be a lager. Well, okay. It's an ale, so... It 
I don't know. It's kind of butterscotchy. It's got like a roasted malt flavor to it. I don't get any butterscotch. Well, there's a sweetness to it that I am attributing to that. I don't get a lot of sweetness. No? On the no on the on the first sip? No. I think this is really nice. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so how would you describe it then? Well, not sweet and not butterscotchy. Really, you guys don't get sweetness on this. I get it. I get sweetness in the in the sip in the first like couple of mouthfuls. I find it very sweet, not like cloyingly sweet, but there is a a certain slight pleasant sweetness slight to it. Slight caramel. Yes, yeah, exactly. But this is not my favorite, unfortunately. I think it's too meh. It doesn't speak to me at all. It doesn't say anything. Uh, well, for me, it says, like... Hey, I'm a brown ale. Well, yeah, well, it's... Uh, I think it's got more character than a traditional brown ale. Um, but I think it's... I don't think it's meant to wow you. I think it's meant to just be drinkable by the fireplace. Yeah. Or for Christmas dinner. Exactly. That yeah. one I buy. It could work with very salty and sweet. Exactly. Yeah. Foods, exactly. It's like this with uh, like a, a pork, well, pork butt with the whole Ooh, crusty fucking. That skin. sounds really crusty good. Skin yeah, 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 yeah. With some that potatoes and yeah, I'm getting I think, hungry. Yeah, I think this would really pair well with that for yeah. Christmas Yule Boy. <laughs> with like the savory Christmas food, that would yeah. be pretty fucking good. Yeah, I... Yeah. Yeah. Rating. I think this is quite good. I, I quite enjoy this. I think there's a lot of character to it. Um, I think on a Yule board, it would go really well. It would pair well with food and hit a lot of different different levels on that. Uh, I'm going to go 375. Right there with you, buddy. I'm only at a 3 young I know that's perfectly fine. I completely it understand it that. Doesn't do it for me. No. It's okay to be wrong on this show. <laughs> yeah, like, as we've that's what I usually say. Again. It's okay to be wrong. Yeah. And again, I think what's important to remember with the seasonal uh, Christmas beer release, the system blog, it is there's a lot of things that come out. Yeah. And uh, there were some 80-something beers that came out this oh, year. Oh, more. 200. <clears throat> no, no. But the release that came out was the regular release and the seasonal release at the same time. Ah. It just happened to coincide that they were both on the first Friday of November okay. or first Monday of November. Oh, okay. yeah. Fair enough. So, therefore, you got 200 releases of yeah, yeah local brews and seasonal ales, and they were mix and match. It was kind of weird to figure out which is which. Fair enough. Um, but we were able to figure out a few of them. Yeah, yeah. Like the next one. Like the next one, which is a U.S. release. It is toasty, malty, and warm. Seven point one percent ABV by volume, coming out of Salt Lake City, Utah, from Wasatch Brewery. A big, beautiful winter beer. I see that with caramel, malt, and an avalanche of dry hops. Oh yeah. Well, they make a bold statement. It is the Wasatch Wonderful Winter. And let's just see how wonderful this winter is going to be. And how bold it is. How bold it could be. Because it could be quite bold indeed. You will wait and see. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of um, carbonation on this bad boy. It just is super frothy. Like, the head retention is... Dark, dark, dark amber. amber. Yeah. Dark amber. Which is what you would kind of expect from a, a winter beer. Yes. Yeah. The nose is pleasant. It's a uh, slightly hopped. Yeah. Um, it smells better than yeah. the Rimmer of Winter Brew. Yeah, it does. Yeah. All right. Cheers. Cheers. It does have more bitterness to it. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> This is much more balanced than the uh, the previous two. Yes. And I would say this is much more in line with uh, the Rimmelov uh, Winter Brew. 
they're kind of like a brother and sister combination almost. Like uh, the River Love is a little more messy all over the place, whereas this um, what's it called? It's Wonderful more, Winter is a little more together. Yeah, yeah, it's more composed. Yeah, as they say. Uh, yeah, this is quite nice. My only complaint is really 7.1% ABV. I feel like this should be 5.4 yeah. at, at most. It doesn't taste like the alcohol, you mean? No, it tastes boozy. I'm just saying like... It also doesn't need... It ah, doesn't need to be that high ABV. No. Like if, I would like to include this as part of a Christmas dinner, Yeah. but I don't want people getting fucked up at the same time. You don't? Well, well, maybe it depends you don't on want people that, how contentious that relationship is. Nice but that, that's when your your racist uncle starts spouting his uh, Nazi uh, propaganda, no pro Trump propaganda, and, and things really start to hit. Yeah, know. yeah, yeah. Well, well, you might like, might as well get him to uh, spit that shit out early and yes. fall asleep. That's true. That's true. So maybe it's good for that. But I just think that um, it's it's quite it's quite good and quite enjoyable. It's a little boozier. Than I would really want it to be. Yeah. So before we recorded this episode, I actually now that I realize I told you a lie. I, I believe that constantly. I, I said that I had tried another of these this brewery's releases that I really loved, mm-hmm. but there are actually two different breweries that both released Christmas beers. Now, both from the U.S., it's Wasatch and it's Whitewater. Oh, right. We had this discussion before. Yeah. So yeah, they had White, the Celtic brewer. Whitewater. Celtic, uh, Whitewater released their Celtic Christmas Stout, mm-hmm. which was actually amazing, amazing, absolutely amazing. Yeah. And I thought it was the same brewery as this one, but it's not. I, I did too. I thought it was the same brewery as well. They have similar graphics. They both start with woo woo. Uh, I I I'm wrong. It's it the has. first time in uh, podcast history it that Mart is wrong. And you should uh, you should keep this episode we'll re- record this for well good thing we have this up for posterity's sake because yes. it will never Duh. go away. What? Exactly, you're so intense. I love that about yeah. you. <laughs> All right, so I'm giving this a three point twenty five. Uh, I'm gonna give this three point five. Three point five. Yes, you're right. It's a three point five. I'm wrong. I'm giving Again, this. For the second time in podcast history. I'm giving this a 375. Ooh. Ooh. That's, that's nice. That's nice. Well, I just think that it's... That makes me happy. It's well composed. I like the maltiness. I like the couple notes. I like the drinkability factor. Again, my major detriment is the uh, unnecessary APV levels on this. Gotcha. Um, I think it could be just as good, but a lower ABV because... I don't feel like these are beers that you should be getting like fucked up on. Exactly. And now we're approaching a beer from the mm, the brewery where I am the biggest fanboy. Now, having said that, <laughs> our last beer of the four beers we chose tonight was Nerd Brewing's Xmas Overdrive Override Imperial Chocolate Orange Milkshake Stout, coming in ten point five percent ABV. Perfect. Now. I'm not a huge chocolate orange fan. And Martin, you've had this before, and you've warned us that this is a chocolate orange bukkake in our mouth. Yes. Mm. So the Swedish Roman arches. It's liquid Roman it's a, arches. It's a classic, well, Christmas candy. Yeah, most... most uh, like after Christmas dinner, you go up, you have your little liqueurs and your coffee yeah. drinks with whiskey in them. Oh, wow. This and, uh, just, smells... Just, you have these candies. Yeah. With them. yeah. Matthias, smell it. It just smells like that. Like, what you described just told me... That's insane. That's that Roman is, Arches. Yeah. Is a chocolate orange, like... So oh, in the US, yeah. you in the US, you can buy these, <laughs> these balls and... They're, oh, you can buy balls. Yeah, you can buy balls. You but they're like to a, buy balls. It's, it's a chocolate orange, basically. So it's a. So you mean I could have gotten paid all this time? No. Oh, not you, Martin. Maybe, but not my, you. My my orange chocolate balls. <laughs> but these, um, you know, I'm a ginger. Yeah, <laughs> that's why you get paid. <laughs> he, he lives. He lives all year minority. round. Yeah. <laughs> 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 okay, that's it. 
We're done. So, so Matthias yeah. is apparently out of this podcast now. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, my story goes, in the U.S., you can buy these chocolate oranges that are shaped like, they're chocolate but shaped like oranges, and you can break off pieces like orange slices, and it tastes ah, like chocolate and orange. That's cool. Yeah. This is what this reminds me of, just from the smell alone. Yeah, Rumus Caberga. Rumus Caberga. Rumus Caberga. Exactly. No, 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 no. You got that? Like, that means something very yeah. different. No, wait, wait, wait. So, what did I say? Well, you, uh, you said Ro- Roman gays. Roman homosexuals. Yeah. Right. What's the difference for what you're saying? Uh, it's quite different. Bill- I don't feel that there's a difference. Uh, well, if, Bill- you knew, if you knew the fucking language, you would. Uh, potato, potato. Burger is an okay word. word. Yeah. Never say burger. You don't do it. Right. Well, so I mean, it's a it's uh, a it's a d- offensive slang term. Yes. Ah, it's not. Really. I mean, not for you. Of Matthias. course, it's offensive. <laughs> Come on. Not for you, country. Oh, no, that's not for the country for folk. Oh, well, he, he lives in the countryside. Uh, yeah, yeah, everything yeah. goes that's there. That's true. All right. So he's gonna like, like... G- gypsies and stuff. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything yeah. flies out there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he's burning fine. crosses later, so we it, understand. He doesn't understand the, the subtleties of. Yeah, know, he's just dressing up as a spooky ghost. He's yeah, that's all it is. <laughs> yeah, I, I still haven't tried. I haven't tasted this beer yet. Uh, so, so I'm sorry. What was that? I was to say, Rumoska Borgar. Borgar. One more time. <laughs> Borgar. Borgar. Uh, close. It's close enough. Rumoska Borgar. Rumoska. No! no! No, that's the wrong way again. Bjorga. 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 Well, that, that you nailed it. Nailed there you go. Bjorga. I'm not going to say anything. Bjorga. Yes. Bjorga. Yes. Romoska Bjorga. Romoska Bjorga. Just, just never say any of these words ever again. <laughs> all right. So now we've offended many people because yes. of my poor We've lost all of our subscribers. Yes. Both of you Please guys, don't leave. I'm really sorry. Please don't leave. We'll he he just has no language. It's fine. That's one of the things where every time we get on the show and I try to speak Swedish, it goes very, very bad. Yeah, we lose like 50% of all of our subscribers every time he oh, says like, a Swedish word. Try 75. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's why I have to rebuild every other month because I just... Uh, yeah. Anyway, this smells like chocolate and orange extravaganza. I'm going to try yeah. it now. Right. Cheers. Cheers, guys. I've already had. Ah, right. oh, whatever. Ooh. Yeah, it's exactly like the uh, Christmas candy. It's rich, it's mm. sweet, it's chocolatey, it's orangey. I am a fanboy, and I did I did help Nerd Brewing in their beginning years. But I think they're I think this is nailing the chocolate orange flavor. I will the thing is, like, you can't take away from them that they are. Really fucking good at making imperial stouts. Yes. Yeah. And if if you don't like the particular taste that a certain pastry stout they make, yeah, like this is chocolate orange. If you don't like chocolate orange, you're not gonna like this beer. Exactly. All right. I don't like chocolate orange, and I will say that this is not uh, a beer that I would like ordinarily order or buy ever again. However. This is fucking amazing. Yeah. I mean, the chocolate on this thing is off the freaking scale. Yes. And the orange doesn't taste artificial. It doesn't yeah. taste like candied orange or whatever orange blossom yeah. oil they dropped into it. This tastes like just rich, rich, dark chocolate and just light oranginess to it. It's freaking incredible, man. I have, I'm really blown away by this. It's extremely seldom that a nerd brewing beer has artificial tastes yeah yeah um well i'll never forget the time that we did the uh the advent calendar comparison and somehow we ended up getting the brew dog box and we got the total box and somehow those boxes synced up in really really weird ways yeah like just on certain days, they would have the exact same style of beer. Whoa. And there's oh, today is a uh, orange cardamom beer. Well, <laughs> from li- both of from them. both boxes. Like literally, there was a, there was literally orange IPA on both di- on one day, and I think it was like day nineteen or something like that. 
And the too old version was like, like orange. It tasted like real orange. And yeah. then you tasted the brew dog version. It was just like, Ugh. this artificial just tastes like mass. artificial flavored orange things. Yep. And it was, you could really feel the difference between the two. I think this beer, you really feel a difference in that the oranginess doesn't feel like, like no, it feels like a fresh orange. Yeah, I feel like I'm getting yeah. real orange in this. Yeah, uh, it's crazy. It's really. But what really blows me away is how rich and chocolatey it is. Like, oh, the orange part fades away in the actually the initial mouthfeel. It fades away, and what you're left with is just rich cocoa, like. Depth that just keeps going. Uh, it's it's quite impressive. If you didn't say it, it's ten point five percent, and it tastes so smooth. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the ingredients obviously hops, yeast, uh, water, and barley malt. Then vanilla, roasted cocoa nibs, and orange zest oil. Yeah, I think orange I'm... zest oil might be the secret to yeah. uh, to this flavor. Yeah, I think so, because you, you do get that from the zest oil. It's like they're, so to give you a, a frame of reference, if you order a cocktail someplace and you see them where they just like skim the zest off the top of an orange or a lemon yeah. or a lime, and they use that to break over the cocktail to kind yes. of give you that, that's the oils that are coming off of that. Definitely. I definitely feel that. It yeah. gives this light, refreshing zestiness to it that you wouldn't get any other way. It doesn't have that bitter, pithy, white part um, of it. So, guys, what would you what would you give this beer? Four point five. Matthias, uh, I'm really impressed. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to go. As well. All right, I'm going to surprise you both. I hate this style. I don't particularly think this is a great beer, but I'm going to give it a five. Because I'll tell you what, I don't think I will have a better version of this style of beer ever in my entire life. This is the Mount Everest, the summit, the pinnacle of this style of beer. This just encapsulates the orange perfectly, it encapsulates the cocoa perfectly. The mouthfeel, the the flavor, it just is so well balanced. It's so incredible. I hope I never have to drink another chocolate <laughs> orange beer in my entire life after drinking this because I know that like nothing I will ever drink will ever compare to this. I think this is <clears throat> fucking amazing, quite, ha- quite frankly. Fuck it. I'll give it a five as well. Thank you. If I were rating based on super specific made up styles, it would get a five. But I'm rating based on flavor, and this is a strong 4.5. It is the best chocolate orange beer there is. Yeah. And that that's where I'll leave it. I mean, this is one of the things where like, oh, what if you barrel age it? I'm like, I think barrel aging it would make it horrible. I think <laughs> this is like, I think fresh, just straight up, exquisite. It's not getting better than what this is at this point. No. Uh, but but the thing is, so override is a, a an actual base beer. Mm-hmm. That Nur Brun makes, which is the like milk chocolate stout, whatever. Yeah. And then there's been like a mint override yeah. and maybe some other override, and now we're at Christmas. So this is already a variant of a base beer. Yeah. So I, I totally agree. Don't barrel age this one. Barrel age the original, and we can compare yeah. it to this one to yeah. see where the base beer goes. Uh, th- that's that's what I usually enjoy when the base beer gets uh, get many yeah. variants. You don't need to go variant and on a variant on a variant. Yeah, uh, it's it's a good beer. It's yeah. a good Christmas this beer. Is, this is a great Christmas beer, and I think this is one of those beers that you bring out after you've had the meal. Everyone's relaxing. You just bring out this and you share it amongst people, and everyone's just like, "Yeah, this br- this evokes yes. memory. This evokes things like." For you guys, you both had this instant key, uh, like specific specificity in your life that this evoked, yeah. and I think that is extremely powerful. And there's so few stories in beer where it just you taste something and it just immediately takes you to that point. 
So for me, Yellow Belly Sunday, the first time I had it, oh yeah, it immediately took me to my childhood. Peanut butter. And these flavors of eating like cereal on Saturday mornings, watching cartoons, eating this like kind of cereal and, and everything. It just like it hit me on such a personal level that it just became an immediate five out of five beer because yeah. it just hit me on such a strong level. I think for you guys, like to be able to evoke those kind of memories and those kind of moments, it's so personal that, uh, I mean, when you have that, it's really lucky and fortunate because there's not many things like that happen in your life that can, that can do that for you. No. Um, so I'm really excited for you in that way. And for me, I just found it to be exquisite, even though I loathe the style itself. <laughs> <laughs> and if anyone is still listening, Because this has been a long episode. It's about 30 minutes so far. Please don't drink this together with the Yulbold. No. Please no, this don't. Is, this is after everything else is done. You might think that this is a Christmas beer and it should be drink with the Yulbold. Drink it afterwards when you're all sitting in front of the open fireplace, eating the chocolates. That's when this yeah. will like, truly yeah. shine. Drink this instead of the uh, liqueurs and the... Uh, bourbons and the whiskey. Yes. yes. It won't make you as drunk, so you'll have a better Christmas altogether. Or you can still have the whiskey afterwards. That depends on how many children are present. Uh, ah, children. You know what? Children can have whiskey too. Don't be ageist. Depends Martin. on the children. Yeah. It depends on the... Uh, sure. <laughs> But drink this together with the chocolates, not the Yulbord food. Yes. Yeah. Please, please, yeah. please. So drink the Rimmelov Winter Brew or drink the yeah. uh, Wasatch, Wasatch win- yes. Winter, uh, Wonderful Winter with the Yule Board. Both of those are going to be amazing yeah. with the food. Yeah. And don't combine the Lucilella with any of the Yule uh, food. Uh, no. 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 Unless, unless you're just having like a Fika and you're like, I, I, really, I really want a Saffron beer to go with my Saffron I, buns. I really want to get drunk off of Fika. Yeah. I think it's like it's three in the afternoon. I'm having a Lusicat. I really need to freaking pound it with the of the beer. Then you have, or it's pretty in the afternoon. All the uh, Lucy cats were sold out. <laughs> There you go. There's the other situation as well. <laughs> you, you, you can drop raisins in it, and therefore you'll have the same yes. experience. Yeah. Okay, guys. So well, uh, thank you, Nerd Brewing, for a great Christmas. Yes, piece. thank you so much. So stay tuned. Our um, advent calendar is really amazing this year. Um, so, so in the past, we've gone with um, commercial Advent beer boxes, and we still have one of those. We are getting the Tool um, Advent Calendar again. So if you've listened to our Advent Calendar in the past, you are well familiar with we've reviewed that twice already. This will be our third time. We're really excited about it uh, because it's always very entertaining and interesting, the things they put in there. Uh, but this year, we did something different. Instead of buying a... Uh, commercially produced advent calendar we also did an advent calendar that we created ourselves so we each contributed um, our own beers into the calendar and um, i think you're going to find something that's quite different unique and um, a real deep dive into some traditional styles and beers and who knows what's going to be in there i can't wait to see what we do and what we brought so, to the table stefan says that It's going to be great because he believes he's bringing really good stuff. No, I know I'm bringing good stuff. But I know, I don't know what you I, guys are doing. I know. But I have faith in you too. That I have bring prepared good stuff. really good stuff. Yeah. You're both way out of line. Did you bring the best stuff? I would say so, yes. I think we had... Ooh. When we're all this confident about our beers, I think we will... I think we have the best Christmas calendar ever in store ahead of us. If we're all this confident about oh, the yeah. beers we prepared, because I've 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 dug a little bit in my cellar, and I have a few really good fresh beers. Yeah, prepared. I have I have some really. I'll blow your minds. We've searched uh, wide and low. Yeah, high and mighty. Deep in the back of our cellars. My goal you guys is to- did. I have no deep cellar to speak of compared to you two guys. Um, so I just went like local through the year, whatever I could whatever I could find to really bring 
uncharted waters to to you guys hopefully so we'll see so we'll see what surprises we have in store but i'm so excited about this year's advent calendar yes all right guys well um until next time keep listening and drinking you (laughs) dum-dums you can find us on uh facebook (laughs) all right (laughs) facebook spotify itunes yeah. Anywhere you would find good podcasts. We are podsyndicate.com. Exactly. And many other places that we just can't think of right yeah, now. Because you can find us on had... YouTube as well. Uh, so <laughs> until next time. Keep drinking, you dum dums. And keep listening. Woof. Roof. Roof. This podcast is part of the Pod Syndicate family. For more criminally compelling shows, articles, and conversations, head to wearepodsyndicate.com.